Welcome to James Plays Games. I'm James, and I, uh... I, I play games. I'd like you to come back in time with me for a moment to the glorious year of 2005 when a certain game graced the world with its presence and introduced us all to the hallucinogenic style of Pseudo-51. Before No More Heroes, Lollipop Chainsaw, and Killer is Dead, the notorious developer Goichi Suda gave us Killer7. Before I get into the critique portion of this video, I want to mention that I fully acknowledge that Killer7 pretty much makes no sense whatsoever. But, I think that if you're going to dive into the war between Harmon Smith and Kunlan, you probably shouldn't bother taking it too seriously. It sure doesn't take itself too seriously, for what it's worth. Killer7 is a game developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer and published by Capcom on June 9, 2005 in Japan, July 7, 2005 in North America, and July 15, 2005 in Europe. In the game's universe, global world peace has been established, but doesn't last long as a terrorist group known as the Heaven Smile emerges and creates tensions between the United States and Japan. In the game, you play as the various members of an assassination syndicate known as the Killer7, but instead of playing as different characters, each member of the team is another persona of the leader, Harmon Smith. While much of the game makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, I don't think it's set out to necessarily be a logical narrative, foregoing that in exchange for a memorable, fun-to-play title that continues to one-up itself with each progressing level. It's the antithesis to a game that tends to take itself too seriously, like with certain entries in the Final Fantasy series. Before you begin playing Killer7, you should know that the entire game's movement is on a literal rail, and in order to move forward, you press the A button on the GameCube's controller. That being said, the title takes full advantage of the rail system, making it one of the best hallway simulators out there. Your primary goal in Killer7 is the eradication of the Heaven Smile, which are demonic humanoid bombs that, if they're allowed to get too close, explode on contact. Normally, they're invisible to the human eye, but your characters have the ability to scan for them, after which they'll be visible for you to seek out their weak point. If it's hit, then you'll be able to collect the monster's blood for healing and upgrading purposes. Each persona in the Killer7 has their own unique personality and fighting style, allowing for tons of variation in how you approach the situation. There are some personae that wield handguns, one that wields throwing knives, and even one who uses grenade launchers if you're feeling a little underpowered. While certain scenes and battles in the game require certain personae, you can almost always switch characters from either an option in the menu or by visiting one of the many Harmon's rooms where you can also upgrade your character's abilities and save your progress. The biggest complaint that I have towards the game is that the control scheme is just a little irritating, especially when you're trying to shoot the enemy weak points and you have to hit a certain spot with unrivaled accuracy, but the joystick won't quite work in your favor. I get that it's an older game, but in certain circumstances, the difference between your, your character and the enemy being killed is as simple as the right shot at the right time, and it's very difficult to make that happen. In terms of the soundtrack, the only real track that I remember fondly is, interestingly enough, one that only appears for a very small segment near the end of each level called Rave On, which is such a distinctive track that you think might appear in other places, but unfortunately that is not the case. Though, with the score being composed by Masafumi Takata, who also composed for the Danganronpa series, I'd suggest checking out the soundtrack for yourself. Killer7 is likely the kind of game that I will always have in my library, and not because the story is great or the gameplay is necessarily fun, but because it's such a uniquely driven game that is just so unlike other games of its genre that it's hard not to see why Studio 51's style is so distinct. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching James Plays Games. Did you agree with my review of Killer7? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, tell me if there's a game that I haven't covered that I definitely should. James Plays Games is part of the Pixelation Network. If you'd like to see more news, reviews, previews, and videos like this, check out www.pixelation.com. See you next time.